All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Paul. Um, right now we're going to worship, so let's all stand. Let's say a quick prayer, and we'll get right started here. Dear Lord Jesus, we just uh, we ask that you'd come, um, be here, um, just be in our hearts, be in our minds, and just be in this place as we worship this morning. And right now we want to make our beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear 
hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive i raise a hallelujah i raise a hallelujah i raise a hallelujah i raise a devoted like a ring of solid gold like a vow that is tested like a covenant of old your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today yourself to me and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be
last song, normally we ask everybody to stand. This one's kind of upbeat, so that's totally up to you. You might want to stay standing on this one, though, so... I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not all my failures I tried to hide It was my too Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Take a seat. Oh, everybody! Oh, everybody, back up. Sorry. Please stand. <laughs> it's the gospel. It's reading. a gospel lesson. <laughs> Calisthenics at St. <Saint> Paul's. <laughs> 
Good morning. Thank you for remaining standing for, the, for today's gospel. If you'd like to follow along, please turn to page 873 in your pew Bible. Uh, the gospel reading is from Luke chapter 13, verse 22 through 30. Again, it's on page 873. He went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you. I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. And that place prophets in the kingdom of God, of teeth, when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourself ca cast out. And people will come from east and west, from north and south, and recline at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. This is the good news. This is great news. Okay, children, you all are dismissed for Children's Church. This is one of those texts from the New Testament that just kind of makes me me cringe at the first service part of our liturgy when we read the gospel text is a, a refrain that comes after it. it says this is the gospel of the Lord and the response is praise to you O Christ well if you heard that text there's not it doesn't seem very gospelish honestly it doesn't seem like there's a, a lot of good news in there in fact you know Jesus actually gives us some pretty tough and hard words in today's text he goes off after a person comes to him as they're traveling and asks the question, Lord, there's just going to be a few that are going to be saved, you know, and, and, and Jesus' response is, strive to enter through that narrow door. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to be seeking, they're going to want to enter, they want to come in, but they're not going to be able to, and they're going to be outside. They're going to be outside knocking on the door, and, and you know, the response will be like, people are going, open up. Open up the door. And his response is going to be, I don't, I don't know you. I don't know where you've come from. It's hard words. And the people go, well, yeah, but you know, we ate with you and we drank with you and, and we heard you teaching in the streets, you know, and we, we heard your word that you were giving. And he says, I, I don't know where you come from. Depart from me, you evildoers. Depart from me, you evildoers. You know, and then there's this breaking in of people are going to be outside, outside the door, and there's going to be this, this gnashing of teeth. They're going to be angry, not with each other, but they're going to be angry with the, the, the Lord. They're going to be angry at what has happened here and that they're not in. They're, they're on the outside because they're going to look through like almost a window, and they're going to see Abraham. They're going to see Isaac. They're going to see Jacob. They're going to see the prophets and these other people, and, and they're in, but they're out. They, they thought that they were, they, they were in. And Jesus kind of wraps this up, and he says, people are going to be in from the east and the west and the north and the south, and, and the least will be first in some places, and other times the, the la the, those who are first are going to be last. And this is the gospel of the Lord. You know, as a Christian, this should make us actually feel pretty uncomfortable. This is Jesus' message, just not for those people back in that day. That's the message of Jesus to you sitting here as a Christian today. It might be on the outside. It's a narrow door. You think you're all in, that you've got it together? Think again. It should strike a little bit of fear into the heart of the Christian. It should say, you know, just give us a little bit of a shake in our confidence and our salvation. I mean, think about who he's talking to at this time. This is first century you know, and, and so the Jewish people are around, and they just, they're descendants of Abraham. I mean, they can trace their lineage back to Abraham. 
They're, they're circumcised, as the Lord said. They've, they've followed God's word, His command, and the promises that have been attached to it. And they're big about keeping the faith. I mean, these are faithful people, okay? I mean, the Torah is a big deal. This is not something they just kind of read and went, oh, that was nice. No, this was very important. It's extremely important to keep the Torah. They, they have times that they go to prayer and times that they go to worship. They've been tithing. They've been giving alms to the poor. They, they take time to go to the temple and offer sacrifices. They're in worship a lot, just not on Sunday morning. This was a normal part of society. This was this is what happened, and they lived and they breathed it each and every day. And they thought that they were kingdom bound because they're serious about their faith. They'd look at their faith and say, you know, we're, we're taking this really seriously, and this is where the question comes from to Jesus because they figure there's only a few of us. There's, out, of, out of most people, there's only going to be a few. And, and Jesus' response is there's going to be people from the east and the west and the north and the south and the, the master of heaven who is the one providing the feast, he's going to hear you knocking, but you're not welcome in. No, wait a minute. I'm a pastor, right? I should have a shoe in. This should be very easy for me, right, as a pastor. I preach God's Word, right? I have the opportunity to study scriptures all the time. I mean, that's what I do. That's how I spend my day. Friday, I went back here and we had a baptism. I, I don't go to one worship service, I go to two. And I take communion at both. And in fact, I just don't, you know, when we add that third service, I'm going to go to three services. Can you guys say that? And I'm going to take communion three times a week. So I should have stamped across the front of my head, you're going to heaven, right? I mean, that should be that shoe in. It should be that easy. In fact, you know, Apostle Peter was a fisherman, Jesus fished. That makes us buds. We're connected because we're fishermen, right? I have that. I, I mean, I am, I'm in. I mean, I kind of live and breathe Jesus each and every day. And maybe as I'm listening to these things, maybe you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I, I, I help with the altar guild. I help put that communion stuff together and I make sure the candles are full or I, I, I'm Dave Cheney and I, I get to greet people at the door and then make sure that we have people to serve communion. He, he loves when I call him out by name. Or I'm, I'm Peter, you know, and, and I get to help with sermons, you know, when Andy lets me and I don't let him do it probably enough and, <laughs> and lead worship and go visit people in the hospital and go visit them when they're shut in. And you know what? You're in, right? You should be in. It, it, don't answer that. <laughs> you know, it, where'd my buddy go? He's out there shaking hands with people, isn't he? He's in, you know, because he's being friendly and nice. Where is he at? <laughs> Way to call him out. <laughs> go to Bible study, right? You're a baptized child of God. Maybe you've been here so long, you remember that statue of Jesus that's all lit up back there when it was over at 3020. Maybe you help pay for this building through the campaigns and you give to the mission of the church each and every week. You give your 10% plus. And you're thinking to yourself, yeah, God knows me. He knows my works. Hmm. You know what this all is that I just did? This is just us gnashing our teeth kind of laying out our argument, that gnashing of teeth, it's useless because Jesus tells us the door is narrow. But what does that mean? What do you mean to have a narrow door? I, I, the best thing for me to do is demonstrate this. So hold on a minute. I've got to walk back here. Hold on a second. Give me just a second here. Oh, there's my two helpers. <laughs> Here we come, right down the narrow way. 
I'm going to hear about this at the Board of Trustees meeting. You can bet my money on that. And I'm going to have parents coming up going, you're not wearing a helmet. That's probably why I'm doing this, right? You know, this is the dumb stuff you do after you've had head injuries. Well, I'm not wiping you out. It's okay. And I missed the communion table. That's good. Hey, it's an arrow way. When you're on a bike, when you're driving a car, when you're walking, you have to keep your eyes forward. If I'd have come down this way, I'd have probably either ran into you if I'd have looked off to the right, taking your foot off, and you'd have been really upset with me, you know? Or I'd have, I'd have ran into someone else on this side if I was looking to the left. I have to look straight ahead. It's a narrow way. It's a narrow path. It's a narrow doorway. I mean, you know how this works, right? When you're driving a car, if you start rubbernecking off to the left, you naturally have a tendency to drift because your body kind of turns. Or if you get pulled over to this side, something caught your interest, you have a tendency to drift to the right. You cross a line. You, you go up onto the curb, you swipe a car, whatever it might be. You have to keep your eyes straight ahead. It's a narrow way. This is what life is. This is what Jesus is telling us. It's a narrow way. He's not mad at us, but he is serious, very serious. He wants us to understand that it is a narrow door. It's a narrow gate. Sometimes we will look to the right, and we look at all those things that I listed that you do or that I do. And we go, God knows me because I do these things. And we're taking our eye off the center of the road. God also wants us to, to understand that there's times and he knows that we are looking to, to maybe the left side, right? And as we look to that left side, what we're doing is we're kind of like going, well, <laughs> here comes that guy. Actually, here comes two of them dressed in black pants, right? White shirt. Black tie, name bad John, you know who I'm talking about, right? I know the truth, they don't. Or you look at the person and you go, man, I know their marriage is messed up. I know their relationship is in a dumpster. I know that their kids are out partying and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're misbehaving. There's not a lot of discipline maybe in the home and we're looking at another person's life or the lives of a family and we're passing a judgment upon them. At least that's not me. That's not my family. That's not my life. I, I mean, look, look over here. This is a mess. Look over here at me and what I do. And this, this is actually really healthy and this is kind of clean. And, and Jesus says, stop it. Quit. It's a narrow path. He's screaming at us out of love. He's screaming at us out of compassion to keep our eyes not to the left what other people are doing, what other people are believing. Not to the right in what we're doing, but keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That's where he wants us to be looking. This is what he's encouraging us because he cares and he loves us so much. He doesn't want us to veer off the road. He gives us the Holy Spirit that helps us keep our eyes on him. Pete talked about this last week. Having that opportunity to keep our eyes on Jesus. These things are wonderful things. You know, we get to maybe participate in in the church. It's not so wonderful when we're judging other people. We're kind of saying, look, you know what? Here I am. I've got it. I've got my life together. I've got my family's life together. And I'm in. I'm good. I'm, waiting. I'm ready to go. Jesus, take me home. Right? But these other people, not so much. In fact, I don't even like talking to them. Honestly, I don't like talking to the people that come to the door. And I've actually been fairly rude, honestly, which probably wasn't a good thing in the past. With like Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons that show up to the door. It's like, it's like really? I'm home. Leave me alone. Go knock on somebody else's door. Exactly. <laughs> but we don't 
argue scripture with them. That's not what God wants us to do. That's not what we're passing judgment. You know, I mean, that, that, that's the problem is if, if we're passing judgment on them, that we're right and they're wrong, and we get in an argument with them, what wins in that? Nothing. That's not what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus wants us to keep our eyes on him. And when we see him, we see the love that he has poured out on us and he has given us. We're like going, wait a minute. <laughs> I, you know, I understand I, I'm not perfect. I, I have relied probably more on my works and the things I do, figuring that God's going to see it and I'm okay. Even though I know that I'm saved by grace, I still kind of want to point to those things or I look at other people and kind of pass judgment that I'm in and they're out. Okay, there's a dividing line here. All right. We're in the circle of trust. <laughs> They're outside of it. Instead, Jesus says, erase it all. Erase it all. And this is not the first time that Jesus has talked to this way about being a narrow door. He also said, I'm the gate. I'm the way. And I'm the way and the truth and the life. You, you see, we sometimes forget that Jesus' love is very inclusive. He died for all. Okay? He, he loves everyone. He, that may be a narrow door, but his love is broad and wide, and he loves everyone. He loves, let me repeat that again. He loves all sinners. Okay? He loves all sinners. All of them. But he's very exclusive in saying, I am the narrow door. I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And all the different ways that he's expressed this in Scripture. Because he wants us to understand and actually really free us. This is about freedom. This text is about freedom. Don't look left. Don't look right. Look at Jesus. When we look at Jesus, that frees us up not to have to argue with someone who has a different doctrine and position, that has a different faith, that has no faith at all, that's maybe struggling with real questions like, hey, if there's really a loving God, how come bad things happen to good people? If there's really a God who desires all people to be saved, then why doesn't he just save them all? Why does it have to be this way only? And those are real questions that people struggle with. And you know what? This is freeing for us because we don't have to have the answer. We don't. We don't have to argue it. We sit with people. And we remember how much Jesus loves me and how much Jesus loves you. And you're able to sit with a person and hear them out. You say, yeah, I can understand how you struggle with that. I understand that, you know, I can get a sense of, you know, you've been through some real hurt and some real pain in your life, and you've got real life questions. You know what? There isn't anything dividing you from me. It's just a narrow door, a narrow way, a narrow gate. But I look at Jesus, and he helps me see my way through these things. So when you find yourself sitting next to an unbeliever, the first thing you remember about them is not that you're right and they're wrong. But they're on that same narrow way. They're searching. That Jesus died for them, just as he died for you. So we simply just love them. And his forgiving love covers us and our sin. And we get to share with them that Jesus' love covers their sin, their shortcomings. Let Jesus be the one who judges, not us. Jesus knows who's in and out. It's his gate. It's his door. It's his narrow way. He just calls us to keep our eyes on Jesus and that narrow door. But it's really not that narrow because his arms are open wide. Open wide with love for us. 
his arms stretched out, his heart for us and for the person next to us and that person next to them and that person next to them because he died for the sins of the world. So I hope you understand that when you hit a text like this, it seems like Jesus is ripping into us. It's done out of love because he wants us desperately to see his love for us and what he provides for us on the cross and through the forgiveness of sins that we too are invited to sit at the table and we don't have to be outside gnashing our teeth, right? We don't have to like, go. I want in. We're in because we've kept our eyes on Jesus and not on ourselves. We've kept our eyes on Jesus and not our neighbor. We've just loved our neighbor. And we love Jesus, who loved us first. In his name, amen. Amen. Our human nature, what I started thinking as Pastor Andy gave this powerful message, did really well on the bike, by the way. I would, have, I would have crashed into the altar and we'd be calling 911. Our human nature causes us so many problems sometimes. And there is the left, there is the right. But that narrow path, that path that leads to that narrow door, that leads to Jesus, is there for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. And that, that is such a, it's such a marvelous thing to think, just to, to let your mind go and think about that for a minute. When I do that, I just, I just feel so warm inside, and I just want to go share this with others. And you all know it already. You've come to worship God this morning. It's just such a beautiful, wonderful thing that Jesus died on the cross for you, and all you have to do is remain focused on that narrow door. I hope and pray that each and every one of you do that today and every day. Let's pray real quick. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Oh, we thank you so much for loving you or for loving us as much as you do. It's incredible, Lord. Help us to love one another even, even just a part of as much as you love us and show that love to others and spread this beautiful, gospel, happy, celebratory message, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for loving us. Let us stay focused on that narrow, that narrow door, because there's so much there. There's you and your love for us. Amen. I invite you to get up. I invite you to share this very love with each other. Since we've been doing a little praying, let's, let's kind of keep in that vein. Let's, let's pray some more. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day that you have given us. We thank you for the message that we received this morning of the love that you have for us, Lord. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for that every day. Lord, we thank you for the chance to come before you and worship. Lord, you are so good. You are so good to us, so much better than, than we even deserve. Lord, thank you. We have many people that, would, that are on our prayer list this morning, Lord, and we ask that you would look after each and every one of them. We pray for Anastasia and Corey and Cameron. And the family of Diane, we pray for Carrie. We pray for Bruce and Risa. We pray for Sherry, Chris, and Scott. We pray for Paul and Debbie and for David. We pray the relationship prayers for them, that you would lift them up, Lord, that you would fill them with your love and your mercy. 
Uh, prayers of strength and healing for Fred, Ardith, Randy, and Carol, for Robert Lee, Scott, Ethan, and Anastasia, Lord. Touch each one of them with your healing hand, Lord, as you are the great physician. Lord, you are the great healer. Uh, we pray for those facing surgery coming up for Ava and Colin. For those who are battling cancer, Lord, give them strength and peace through this time. For Gloria, Christy, Leah, Kathy, and Mary Jean. We pray for a number of people who were hospitalized this past week, that they are recovering, that you would give them strength and healing. For Shelby, Mike, Kristen, Janet, Herman, and Bob. And we pray for sympathy and peace for those who have lost loved ones, for Larry and Judy Freetag, and for the Arroyo and Harris family. Lord, we also offer a prayer of thanksgiving for Courtney's new job, for, Hor for the family of Horst Kuhlman, um, and for the healing for Leah and for Scott. Lord, thank you for, for all, of, all of the things that you do, the way you touch us, the way you bless us, the way you heal us. Lord, we, thank for the, th we pray for those who are traveling, for Alex Thomas, and we pray for all the college students that are going back to college. And Lord, we also thank you for the college students that have come here in Lakeland to Southeastern, to Florida Southern, to Florida Polytechnic. We thank you for those students that are finding a, a, a church home here with us. Lord, bless them and be with them. Surround them with your angels. Lord, we pray for, Gar for Garrett and Billy, who, have, who are now in the, in the armed forces, Lord. Surround them with your angels. Bless them and be with them. And for those who are considering and seeking employment, for Tracy, Linda, and Cheryl. Lord, thank you, Lord, for all of your mercies as we, we pray your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now... We got, got there they are. Okay. It's time to worship the Lord with our offerings. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you strong in your faith to life everlasting. Be in that peace. Amen. Just uh, a few announcements. Left them over here. I encourage you to kind of look at the um, top of the yellow box in the announcements. Just celebrating what God did this last week. We had some wonderful opportunities to see just God at work in people's lives, and in the church, uh, in, in this community even. So keep looking for how God is working, okay? Uh, takeoff event was between services, so we'll be starting up with all those Bible studies and opportunities to connect. Those things are coming online. Um, look in the, the announcements for information about all the different things like screenagers. Look, if you've got kids or grandkids, you need to see this movie, okay? I don't care how little they are, go as a parent because I get contacted all the time and I'm just going to be really blunt here that, you know, I caught my kid looking at something inappropriate on the computer. What do I do, okay? These are hard things that we didn't have to when we were growing up. I'm 54, you know, I didn't have to face this stuff, okay? But our kids do. And we need to be very vigilant. And Screenagers is a wonderful um, site that you can go to and learn a lot about how to help protect your kids, your grandkids. All right? So uh, this, this movie is a wonderful opportunity to gather together. It's appropriate for, you know, as it'll say, we really encourage you to, to think this, but it'll also help you if you've got young ones that are or below that age. I would really encourage you to, to think about going to that. Uh, grief Share starts up here real soon. Announcements in the bulletin about that. And as you maybe have had a loss or someone that you know and love have had a loss, this is a wonderful opportunity to gather together with people who 
who are going through some of the same things that you're going through and discuss those and have that opportunity to share, okay? Uh, Monday, tomorrow, I have coffee in the church here. If you just want to come in and have a cup of coffee, I was told that there's a lot of coffee left, so I wouldn't have to make any, but I did promise fresh coffee, so I'll make sure that there's (laughs) fresh coffee there, all right? And some of you just were really concerned about how I did the bike riding at 8.30 service. I sat side saddle on it with my alb. No, I didn't. (laughs) Um, I, I walked to the back, I ripped off my stole, my all really quick, had my mic hooked up underneath it all, I usually have it on the outside, and, and so my all did not get caught in the chain or anything like that as I was writing it down. Um, last thing is flying tigers. Great time to go out, faith and family night, there's an announcement in the bulletin about that, just come on out, watch a game, have a hot dog, uh, hear some Christian music, some Christian testimonies, and, and connect with other people in the community that have faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Okay? All right. So, um, what's next? There we go. Mission statement. I couldn't find it in here quick enough. We are passionate followers followers of Jesus. Jesus, Making disciples disciples by by eagerly connecting the community community with the faith, faith, hope, hope, and love love that transforms. transforms. Pete, you want to come up here and do the benediction? Yes. Sorry about that. That's all right. We were doing a little praying over there. It's good. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord always look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. your head we were sinners the river's just ahead down the path of forgiveness salvation's waiting there Lord's a mighty fortress ten thousand burdens high love is here to lift you up here to lift you high if you're lost and wandering come stumbling in like the prodigal child see the walls Rumbling, let the gates of glory open wide. And all who strayed and walked away, unspeakable things you've done. Fix your eyes on the mountain, let the last be dead and gone. Come, all saints and sinners. You can't outrun God Whatever it done can't overcome The power of the blood If you're lost and wandering Come stumbling in like the prodigal child See the walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open If you're lost and wrecked again Come stumbling in like the prodigal child See the walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide Like the prodigal child See the walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide If you're lost and wrecked again Come stumbling in Like the prodigal child See the walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide Let the 
gates of glory open wide. Let the gates of glory open wide. Have a good week. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread This is my daily bread Your very word Spoken to me
This is the air I breathe. This is the air. 